Glad to have you back. In March 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic triggered acute declines in metal prices, mainly due to the collapse in metal demand as short and long-term supply were also disrupted by mine closures and a wave of capital spending cuts in the mining sector. Two years after, metal demand grew by nearly 4% in the third quarter of 2021, following a rebound in industrial activities globally. Uh, given that Nigeria imports iron ore from the production of steel and primary manufacturing hardware from Ukraine, the ongoing crisis between Russia and Ukraine has caused global disruptions in the production and shipment of products, which in turn is having a ripple effect on Nigeria's building and construction industry. Let's understand this. And I also have joining me via Zoom. Uh, he's the vice chairman of the basic metal sector of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Mr. Likon Adewoye, thank you so much for your time. Good afternoon and happy Easter to you, Mr. Adewoye. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, happy Easter. Uh, yes, let's start with a little bit of a uh, uh, throwback or an overview, whichever way you want to take it, of what's been happening with COVID and after COVID. Now it's Russia and Ukraine crisis on the iron and, of course, the steel market. Take us through You're a major player in this sector. Tell us what we need to know. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, good afternoon once again. Um, so as... I mean, we all know uh, a couple of, uh, I think that was sometime in 2020, we had uh, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic that stored the uh, operation virtually uh, all over the world. And of course, a uh, basic matter wasn't an exception. Um, but early 2021, we saw that uh, uh, the COVID situation was eased out and uh, some of the backlogs um, uh, of steel requirements, you know, had to resurface again, uh, which of course uh, spike, you know, price of uh, uh, steel products uh, globally. We saw an increase of uh, even over 200% in, in the price of steel uh, uh, sometime in 2021. Then of course, um, uh, toward the end of the year, I think it was stabilizing again until recently when uh, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine started. Uh, don't forget, Russia is the fourth largest producer of steel in the world. And because of the avalanche of sanctions imposed on Russia, uh, many companies, both in Nigeria and of course uh, outside Nigeria, and, uh, cannot uh, transact uh, with, uh, with Russia. So that, again, uh, further pushed the price up. Uh, in China and, of course, in other parts uh, of the world where uh, steel uh, products have been produced. So the, the direct impact of it on our operation is that the uh, price of raw material has gone up, and that uh, ultimately means that the uh, price of, uh, I mean, the cost of building also will go up. Hmm. And this is a country where, uh, as we all know, the minimum is just about 30,000 uh, uh, Naira uh, per month, uh, which of course makes life a uh, more difficult for people uh, who have to, you know, uh, rent accommodation and other. So the, the far reach implication of it is, is quite tremendous. Hmm. Really tremendous and impacts on the people one way or the other. I want to talk about uh, the big Ajakuta Steel, uh, which is um, one, the big elephant in the cupboard. That's the Ajakuta Steel Company. We've been talking about this. I think the Russians were supposed to come in, and because of this same issue, they pulled back and all of that, even after some investments and all of this. Uh, what's the true situation of things, if you have any idea with regards to that at, at the moment? And can that really change the narrative if uh, working uh, at at least a uh, productive level, highly productive level? Yeah, uh, okay, so uh, some of us believe very strongly that the resuscitation of the uh, Ajakuta steel will help strengthen the steel value chain, uh, not only in Nigeria, but indeed the entire Africa. Uh, we are aware that there was a discussion to resuscitate this uh, plan between the federal government of Nigeria and the Russian government. But with this um, um, barrage of sanction on Russia, I don't think that uh, an offshore investment will be a priority for Russia. Uh, this uh, uh, very uh, this time we have because again, uh, quite a number of issues they have to cope with. So that, uh, to an extent, will be a setback, you know, for Ajaputa State. 
We do hope that government will find a way around this uh, state that are the moribund, uh, state plan that have been moribund for many, many, many years. Uh, not just at Jakarta State, uh, this also includes uh, Itape, where the ion uh, mining is also taking place. So we, we hope the, the government will be able to navigate through and bring this plant uh, back alive again. Now, do we have functional uh, metallurgical uh, complexes or mills that are really functional in Nigeria at the moment? Because many are saying that our investigation shows that a lot of raw materials suitable for steel production are available in the country. Okay, so, you know, uh, I think we must do uh, give kudos to uh, basic metal uh, manufacturers in Nigeria. They have done tremendously well. Uh, amidst the, you know, uh, the challenges in our business environment. Uh, prior to 2016, you know, Nigeria was importing quite a lot of steel. But because of the effort of some of our members uh, who invested in backward integration, uh, we're able to produce quality steel from just a, a making of a scrap. Today, uh, the importation of a rebar iron rod has dropped by almost 80% from what it used to be in uh, prior to 2016. Uh, and also, we know that uh, some of our members also are making a huge investment uh, in mining of iron ore uh, somewhere in, uh, around Kaduna there. Uh, except for the security challenges that, uh, you know, again, is posing a huge challenge to them. So if we look at what the manufacturer in basic metal sectors have done, I think they have done tremendously well. Uh, what we just need is the support from the government. And this, 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 these challenges, we believe the government has what it takes to address them, if indeed the government wants to. Hmm. Brilliantly said. Uh there's this people, uh, manufacturers like you would say that uh, cables made in Nigeria, they say they are the best. That's what we hear. Uh, what about the irons made in Nigeria? What stage are we? Are they also uh, at that, at par with the cables in Nigeria? It's a two in one question. I'm also going to ask you what your relationship is as an association with the federal government, particularly at this time where the Ministry of Mines and Steel is also driving uh, that, um, you know, ways and opportunities to open up the mining space, uh, of course, for iron and steel and all of that. What's your relationship with them? Okay, so for the, the first question, I will say that when you look at the basic steel of uh, materials in Nigeria, if you talk about iron rod, which is used for building construction, uh, you talk about wire rod for some production like wire knee, uh, mesh fencing, you know, uh, BROC and stuff like that. Uh, I think we have done very well. The quality we are producing in Nigeria today is 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 um is international standard is international standard and i think a lot of users can actually attest to uh, what i'm just talking about uh, we have some of uh, companies both local and foreign that used to import uh, before now now they all buy from a local manufacturer so we have made a tremendous progress in the quality of steel we produce uh, in nigeria the the second question you ask about uh, the relationship between the uh, manufacturers in Nigeria and of course uh, the federal government, I know there has been series of engagement. We've been engaging the government on a whole number of issues, and this is because we are not happy with what is happening with the basic metal sector. In the last couple of years, we've had uh, quite a number of our, you know member companies that have shut down because they couldn't just cope anymore. If you talk about the problem of foreign exchange, you talk about the malpractices in free trade zone that are impacting uh, businesses of manufacturers within the custom territory, uh, multiple taxation, the high cost of energy. There are just too many problems. So we have been engaging the government, and the government also is responding, but of course not at the desirable, desirable level that you know, we, we really want to see. But we keep on engaging the government, and hopefully uh, someday they will attend to uh, our concerns. Well, some will say that um, if we continue this way, we might not be able to meet up with the fourth industrial revolution uh, if we continue at this pace. Uh, what, what's your reaction to that? So let me say, when, so the, the, the industrial revolution plan we're here from talking about, first, you, you look at how 
uh, it, it hinges on uh, the environmental factors, okay? Because the environment has to be conducive first, okay? If today, as an intended investor, you want to invest in Nigeria, you will conduct an environmental scanning. If you conduct an environmental scanning on the Nigeria business environment today, everything is negative, you know, from political to economy to rule of law to infrastructure. If we are serious about the industrial revolution plan go, the government has to begin to focus on how to make the environment conducive for businesses to operate. As it is now, even with that, we are operating currently with not even breed because the environment is choking. You know, so we want the government to be serious about this business. If Nigerians truly want to be part of the uh, economies that, you know, are thriving in the world, we have to deliberately work towards achieving it. It's not just by wishing it, you know, it's not just by wishing, it's not, it's not just by desiring it. We have to do what is required on our part to ensure that people who are interested in investing in Nigeria can come here and invest. And those that are even operating right now that have, you know, uh, an environment that is conducive for them to do their businesses. Hmm. So uh, this sounds, sounds very interesting. You touched on uh, Forex issues, which I know that manufacturers like you grapple with uh, uh, for, for, for a while now. What's your outlook for the entire space, looking at all of these challenges that you face here and there? Uh, it's another two in one question. In specifics, what do you think government can also do to support your business? Okay, on the foreign exchange, um, from basic matter, uh, for those who have the capacity, we are making effort to invest in backward integration so that substantial part of our input raw material uh, is sourced locally, okay? But what about those who are unable to invest in this, uh, you know, uh, type of backward integration? Those that we still have to depend on, you know, uh, uh, importation of some basic uh, raw material, even spare parts. Sometimes to get effects uh, to import spare parts is, is a big problem. I think the government has to prioritize. We know that uh, they talk about, uh, oh, you can apply, uh, but when you apply, do you get? We don't get. So that is the problem. We don't know what the priority of the government is concerning the management of uh, uh, the foreign exchange. But for me, I think the what is even important, you know, to hit this FX problem is for government to begin to look inward and see how we can support manufacturers, you know, in Nigeria. When our export exceeds import, automatically we have more money in our hand. But the situation whereby everything is imported into the country because the environment is not conducive, we will continue to have this problem of foreign agent scarcity. So government should look inward, see how they can support the manufacturers, see how they can create incentive for manufacturers, see how they can provide all these necessary infrastructure amenities they need for them to run their business successfully. This is the responsibility of the government. The issue about FX, it will, it's an automatic thing. When the environment is conducive and your hard coat exceeds your, you know, what you are importing, your export exceeds what you're importing into the country, automatically the government will have more money in their hands. Hmm. And now, uh, finally, before I, I, I let you go, now we talked about unbearable cost of even building or even renting a house now because of the uh, all of the materials are so much on the high side. Now, as an association, I'm also thinking that do you, have a, do you monitor and evaluate your members so that we don't have people caught in corners and we don't have issues uh, all around our structures uh, in the country? Well, uh, so, so what I can say first is, you know, so the government has a regulatory agencies yeah. that monitor some of these, uh, I mean, the operation of uh, manufacturing companies. We know that you know business is good when it's good for the society so it is expected of every manufacturer every company in nigeria to operate responsibly right but that does not mean that people can still not cut corners and that's why we have agencies like SOHN, mm. you know um NAVDAC and the rest of them depending on which industry we're talking about here so i think it's the responsibility of the government to do that because the manufacturers are grappling with so many issues already 
you know, that even they themselves, they don't have enough time for their own business. And for them to be now going and be doing the regulatory uh, job, which of course is the responsibility of the government or government agencies, I don't think that's, who, uh, you know, I don't think that will work. But I think the government should just try and step up. Like I said, let the government you know, provide that sustainable environment, conducive environment where businesses can thrive. It's an interesting one there. I must thank you for spending your Easter Monday afternoon with us on Business Nigeria. I've been speaking to Mr. Lekon Adewoye, who is the vice chairman of the basic metal sector of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon.